my shop is overrun. Not with those. My shop's overrun with scrap wood, so I decided to build this to solve the problem. Like many other woodworkers out there, I have trouble getting rid of wood scraps. I always think, oh, I'm for sure going to use that someday. And that mentality ends up creating large piles of scrap that are taking up space in the shop. Don't get me wrong, I do end up using a lot of the scraps. Most of the tool holders on the French cleat wall are made from scraps. And most of my projects end up using something that I reclaimed from another project. And my wife is even getting in on the scrap wood action. She made these cool mountains out of the scraps from the new stairs that I built a couple of weeks ago. So if I'm going to keep all these scraps, I need a way to store them. So I did what most of you would do. I searched YouTube for wood storage solutions. And then, after seeing what others have created, I designed my own. My design is a mishmash of a bunch of other designs. I compiled all the features that I was looking for into something that works for me. I wanted it to be mobile, because then I can access the other side of it. If I put this up against the wall and it doesn't have wheels, then I'm not going to be able to reach the other side. I wanted a place for sheet goods. There are times when I'll have full 4x8 sheets of plywood stored in the shop for a while. It's not all that common to store large sheets for long periods of time, but it does happen. So I want to be able to store them on the wood cart. I'll also need storage for things like 2x4s and other long bits of lumber. This is something that I seem to have in my shop all the time. So the space for this type of lumber has to be substantial. In this design, I have this large area in the middle for all that long lumber. And last, I added a place for all those cutoffs that seem to pile up all over the place. This is just a big bin that'll hold a ton of these medium-sized bits and pieces that I'm totally going to use someday. The base for this thing has to be strong, and just how strong it needs to be is kind of surprising. The weight of all this wood really adds up. This is something that I learned from watching another YouTube video by Ben Tardiff. He recently made a mobile wood cart, and after loading it up with all that wood, he discovered his casters weren't strong enough to hold the weight, and ended up needing new wheels. The base of this will be made from 2x4s and half inch plywood. My first step is to cut the plywood to size. So I put it up on the new bench, and under the plywood I have a few thin styrofoam sheets so that I can cut through the plywood without cutting into the bench. First I use my saw guide to cut the plywood to length. Then, since the saw guide's not long enough, I used the best 2x4 that I could find as a saw guide to cut the plywood to my desired width. Now that I have that cut to size, I'm going to start building the base upside down on top of the bench. I'm going to make a frame of 2x4s around the edge of the plywood, and then add a couple more down the middle to make sure it's strong enough. I'm also going to add some 4x4 post scraps in the corners to help support the wheels. See, I actually do use some of my old scraps. Now it's time to add the wheels. Remember, these need to be strong. There, that's better. The middle of the cart is going to be made from a series of A-frames that will connect to the base and will later be held together with plywood shelves. One side of the A-frames will be square with the base, but the other side will have a slight angle of about 5 degrees. After cutting all the parts for the A-frames, I give them a quick sanding to remove all the tear out left from the miter saw. And then I assemble the first one on the workbench. Once the first one is assembled, I use it as a guide to assemble all the others, just to make sure they're all the exact same size. Now I have eight of these all ready to go. 
But before I move on to the next step, I'm going to add a board to the front that will keep the sheet goods from sliding off. This piece of lumber was reclaimed from my old workbench. The next step is to attach all of the A-frames to the base. For this part, I'm going to add a sheet of plywood that's cut to the same size as the bottom of the A-frames. This will give me something to attach the A-frames to. One edge of the plywood is cut to the same 5 degree angle as I used on the previous step. I use brad nails to attach this plywood since I only really need to keep it from sliding around while I screw down the A-frames. Once all the A-frames are in place, it's time to add the shelves. Now that the shelves are in, it's time for the next step. These areas here will need to be filled in or scraps will end up falling into the shelving area. And I don't want that. So I'm going to use this scrap siding. This is stuff from the chicken coop build. Cut them to size and attach them with brad nails. Now that I have that taken care of, I'm going to add a strip of wood along the bottom. This will be support for the plywood that makes up the bin. After attaching the plywood, I decided that it should be painted. At least the plywood parts anyway. They don't look all that good. But I like the rest, so I won't paint that part. Now that it's all done, it's time for my favorite part. Getting all this wood that's spread out all over the shop, all into one location, that I can then move wherever I want it. What a difference that makes. With this all loaded up with wood, I have a bunch more space available in the shop. For now, I'm going to put the cart here in front of the shelf. This shelf is going to be emptied and taken apart fairly soon. And then the wood cart will live up against the wall where the shelf is now. I plan to build some better storage in the shop really soon. If you've not seen how I made the shop, then click on this video and see what it took to convert this barn into a workshop. Mm -hmm.